Well, hello everyone. How are you guys today? It's me again, Amy of amyraup.com. And as always, so happy and honored to be with you. Today we have another story of hope for you from um, a client of mine who was both a coaching client and an acupuncture clinic client. And it's a great story. Naturally pregnant at 45 after a handful of um, losses. And yeah, I can't wait to share all the details. I spent about an hour this morning collecting email information work, looking at her new patient paperwork, my chart notes. And so I have like a 12 page document to read through and share details of her case and her story with you. For those of you that are new to me, uh, A, welcome. B, I, again, I'm Amy of amyrop.com. I'm a best-selling author. Uh, books that are going to apply to today's case are my book, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. Also my book, Body Belief. Both of these, um, were highly, highly, highly influential in this woman's case and her successful pregnancy at the age of 45. Um, actually, she's almost 46. She turns 46 next month and she's um, about 17 weeks pregnant now with a healthy girl. So she, so anyway, me. Uh, every month, once a month, I do a lot what we call my stories of hope. And um, it's live on, on Instagram and Facebook where I, and then we post it to YouTube. So if you're watching this later, that's perfectly fine too. And then we put it on my blog as well. Um, but I like to come to you and actually just share the nitty gritty details of one woman who is like you, who has been on the path. She'd been trying to conceive since about the age of 42. So, um, so she was for three plus years. So a woman who's on the path, like you, trying to conceive, trying to figure shit out, trying to get pregnant, trying to stay pregnant, trying to stay healthy, doing all the things she can do to optimize her egg quality, improve uterine lining, improve uterine receptivity, all of the things. And three years might seem like a long time. And, and it is, it sure as hell is. But like I always say to my women, um, if you are here, that is enough in my sense of that's enough hope for you right now. Like you're here, you're listening, you're tuning in. So you still have hope even on the days when you feel discouraged and disheartened by this process. Um, remember you're human. You're allowed to feel all the feels. You should feel all the feels. But also be true to yourself. Be true to your heart. Listen to your intuition. Um, and if there's still hope in your heart, I want you to honor that, you know? And so, okay, let's get into it. So again, if you guys want to know, know more about me, if you just started following me, um, the best thing to do is go to my website, amyrop.com. I have an awesome fertility quiz on there that gives you lots of juicy information. After you take that quiz, you get all sorts of goodies from me. Um, check out my books. Again, um, you know, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant is one of my best-selling books. Then I have Body Belief, which is second in line, my very first book, Chill Out and Get Healthy doesn't get as much credit as it should, but awesome book as well. Um, and then I have another book that's going to be coming out soon called The Egg Quality Diet, which is basically what this woman followed. And so we're going to dive into that right now. Okay. And I am reading from, from notes because I have a lot of clients, um, hundreds of like hundreds probably right now in this moment, thousands over the years. Um, so to remember all the details is nearly impossible. And if you guys have questions about this case, ask them. If they are questions um, not about this case, then I'm not going to answer them because, you know, I want the time spent on the topic of choice. I do do a fertility hot seat every other Monday. So keep an eye out on that where you can come on live and do a free 15 minute consultation with me, which is how this woman, Jackie, started with me. Not in my fertility hot seat. I was just doing 15 minute consultations. That was her very first um, time with me. And then we also are starting, um, we're going to be doing monthly um, Q&A sessions where you can submit questions to me and I will answer them. And we're going to be promoting that shortly. So you'll keep an eye out for that too. But those are other ways for you to get my um, feedback on what could potentially be going on with you. And of course, you can also check out my site and all the coaching options. I have two amazing fertility coaches that work under me and myself and all those things. Okay. So let's get into it. So this is the story of Jackie. Obviously I changed names and I'm gonna, I'll skim over very um, 
personal details because I like to protect um, my clients and their privacy. And I think that's the most respectful thing that one can do. So I always respect my girls. So um, as I said, she started with me. Um, first email she ever sent me um, was in 2000 and late 2017. I'm 42 years old trying to get pregnant. I have chronic gut problems for the past couple of years and still have to wait another six weeks to see a celiac special specialist after being misguided by a gastroenterologist and finally realizing on my own that cutting out gluten provides 50% relief of my digestive symptoms. I thought it was Amy's advice. So she was, she was following the advice in this book because at that time, I don't even think this book was out yet. Um, uh, I'm trying to decide one, whether it's better for me to come see Amy and one or one of her New York City associates, because she did live near one of my clinics, or if I'm better trying to come in December, waiting until after my January 18th doctor's appointment, where I hope to get some more better information. What are your thoughts? Um, we recommended that she do a free 15 minute consultation with me, which is, I was still doing those for my website back in 2017. And now, as I said, I do my fertility hot seat every other week where you can choose to come on live with me. So all of my fans see you and hear your case and you get a free 15 minute consultation with me. But then we're also gonna implement this uh, monthly Q and A with me as well. So keep an eye out for that. So after our consult, um, she, you know, I had some recommendations for her. Um, and uh, I'll get into her whole case, but what I said to her was, here are a few simple lifestyle things we can tweak to help you start feeling better now. I told her to increase her CoQ10, make sure she gets on some methylated bees um, and start doing some bone broth. And then I also said to, you know, be 100% gluten um, free. And then um, she wrote back again um, in, a couple months later, how long do I need to wait to get an appointment with you? Now I'm 43, I'm about seven to eight weeks pregnant. So she got pregnant between that, that initial 15 minute consultation with me. Um, her doctor told me, my doctor told me the baby is not growing and that I expect to miscarry very soon. So she was seven to eight weeks pregnant, but um, the miscarriage had already started. My, my doctor even suggested inducing the miscarriage. I've had two miscarriages already. So this was miscarriage number three. And while one of them was possibly because I got very ill and ended up dehydrated and in the hospital, I know the other one was due to a genetic issue. I'm concerned about having multiple miscarriages and want to know if this is something we can troubleshoot and fix. My doctor showed me that my uterus is getting the blood flow that it needs, but the placenta isn't getting blood flow. I'm thinking the lack of growth could be because of the low blood flow supply um, or restricting nutrition. What? Let me know what you think. Um, and then... She messaged again, and about two weeks later, she she signs up to do a full new patient consult with me. So that's where we spend an hour, and I go in detail over her case, and we do it via Zoom. So this is how I work. It's how my coaches work. Um, again, at the time, she's 43 years old at this point. She's reading, yes, you can get pregnant. Um, and... Um, no real diagnosis. So she had a previous partner that she had done an IUI with. Um, and in retrospect, it was because they weren't really having much sex. And so they did an IUI to try to have a baby. This is a previous partner and she miscarried at about 12 weeks. Um, and it had a severe genetic condition. So they did do a, a, a genetic test on it. Um, but she was also during that time eating gluten and really sick with celiac. So I think the, you know, there was obviously malnourishment in herself and she probably didn't have enough to really maintain that pregnancy. Um, and then she got pregnant again, um, naturally. So she had a pregnancy in, um, late 2017 miscarried, um, and then got pregnant again in early 2018, had a really bad virus miscarried again. And then, she um, had a third miscarriage in uh, late 2018, which is when she's now reaching out to me. And what other things? She has recurring yeast infections. Um, she has severe gluten sensitivity, recurring yeast infections. Um, she does exercise. She walks, jogs, decent sleep, no cigarettes. She does drink some tea, no coffee, no alcohol. Um, she takes a probiotic, a prenatal, a CoQ10, um, 
methylated B vitamins, cod liver oil, calcium, magnesium, D3. Um, her diet was eggs, gluten-free bread, vegan cheese, coconut oil, fresh fruit, almond, milk, cacao, vegetables, grains, turkey burger only once a week. So she was pretty close to being a vegetarian. Vegetable, grains, some beans, occasional meat. And she did seed cycling with nuts and seeds, had plain almond yogurt, healthy jam or nut butter. Um, she drank enough water. She, you know, she had, um, she was in a really good relationship. This is the new relationship now. Um, and um, then she talks about yeast infections. Some years she has none, um, but this year, along with the miscarriage, she also has had five yeast infections. Um, she gets diarrhea when she ingests gluten. She has fatigue. Um, she, what is her? What are her expectations? I want to get pregnant and stay pregnant and have a healthy baby, and I want to cure my recurrent yeast infections. I feel that my periods are lighter than they should be. Not much cervical mucus during ovulation. Also had a mostly vegetarian diet for most of my adult life. Supposedly, I'm lactose intolerant as well. Took thyroid and MTHFR test you recommended in your book, and she has the results. Um, so, and then some of her red flag symptoms, poor night vision, dry eyes, hearing loss, ringing in ears, sinus congestion, um, underweight, strong appetite, gas, belching, runs too cold, has a low libido, very poor memory. Um, her cycles are about 26 days, um, about four days of flow. She's had, like I said, um, three miscarriages at this point. Um, and so after we do, um, our initial consult, I, my follow up to her is going non toxic with her bath and beauty products, getting on some bone broth, adding in, um, organic plantain chips. I didn't feel like she was, um, I guess, oh, it was a good substitute, right? Cause she was to get off the gluten free stuff. Cause that's another thing. And I talk about this in, I'm, you know, I'm writing the introduction and first chapter to the next book to the egg quality diet book. And, you know, I talk about this diet and how I do think it's really helpful and a great starting point for so many women. But what I tend to see is it can be a little vague and it leaves room for error. And the other thing is when women go gluten free or dairy free, they replace it with a bunch of packaged processed gluten free foods, which is what this woman was doing. So I wanted to get her to like real food. So um, plantain chips are a great source of like a real food that aren't filled with like all the nut flours or soy flours or anything else, processed packaged sugars, that kind of thing. Um, her MTHFR that she had gotten based on, you know, the recommendation in this book showed that she had one copy of the MTHFR. She had never, you know, I put her on the methylfolate upon that 15 minute consult, but up until that point, she had never been on methylfolate. Um, I also urged a complete clotting factor panel. Um, her doctors were resistant to doing that, even though she had had three miscarriages at this point. They kept telling her it was her age. Um, I also recommended that every time she tries to conceive in her luteal phase that she take baby aspirin. Again, that's based on my clinical experience. I'm obviously not a physician, but I always recommend that they see a hematologist, get that recommendation, um, clear it with their doctors. But I do see in cases like this, especially where there's more than one loss and she's over the age of 40 and she has a clotting factor like MTHFR, that baby aspirin can be significantly helpful. Um, and then at that point too, my body belief book was just coming out. So that's when she signed up for my body belief jumpstart, which is basically a free gift, um, with the book in, even still, it still exists now. Um, I forget what the link is, but Beth can post it and you can DM us for it, but it's a, basically, um, a course that I created to go in conjunction with my book body belief. So she signs up for the body belief jumpstart. And then she, so this was August when I do the first intake with her, the detailed intake. Let me just see the date. Um, it, sorry, September, 2018. So then my book is coming out in March. She signs up for the jumpstart in March. So we do that follow up. I don't hear from her again for a while. This is kind of the, 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 the history with her. April 2019, she starts seeing me in the clinic. Um, at that point, she comes with a bunch more lab results. Her vitamin D is low. It's a 35. So I recommend that she get on vitamin D. Um, her doctors didn't do a full clotting factor panel. They'd only done like a couple of them. One of them, the prothrombin um, time, the PTT, 
was a little slow. So I said, I again urged her to see a hematologist. Um, and then um, after that acupuncture session, I put her on liver pills. Um, I told her to increase her vitamin D. I wanted her on bone broth, ideally four to six ounces, four to five times a week. Adding in beets, avocado. She didn't really like to eat meat, so we were getting her on salmon and occasional red meat, doing castor oil packs. Um, I gave her the video on how to do castor oil packs. She's planning her wedding, so I'm like, have fun, keep the faith, you know. Um, then the next month, she writes me, um, I just noticed I have a slight yeast infection. I'm getting married on Saturday. I'm on cycle day 28, so I could be pregnant. What should I do? I can call the doctor tomorrow. Um, so I recommended using some tea tree oil, um, doing um, a baking soda sits bath, and um, with some apple cider vinegar baking soda. I have information on this on my website, and it really helped her. Um, and then I also, then in June, so that the yeast infection went away. She didn't need medication for that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Instagram. Um, in June, I put her on Chinese herbs. She came back to the clinic. She shared her BBT with me, her basal body temperature charting. Her luteal phase temperatures looked lower than I wanted them to look. And her luteal phase wasn't as long as I wanted it to be. So I put her on Chinese herbs. Um, in July, her husband gets um, some troubling health news that he basically has to get taken care of and get treated. So they basically have to um, stop trying for, I think he's going to do treatment like August. So for three months after August. Um, but in July, when she tells me about her husband, um, oh my God, sorry, sorry, Instagram. Now a phone call came in. In July, um, I recommend that she get the book Nourishing Traditions, which as someone told me years ago, it's not just a cookbook, it's a Bible. And I really wanted her to get back into like eating real food, whole foods, because she was still doing like that vegan cheese and everything was like gluten-free, packaged processed stuff, um, Nourishing Traditions. And then I put her on the Body Belief Diet at this point. So this is now July, 2019. And I put her and her now husband on these this diet. Um, gave her more information on the best fats to cook with. Um, so then moving forward, um, August, like I said, they have to put trying to conceive on hold. So August, September, October, they can start trying again in November. And so November, December, still not pregnant. She's gotten another yeast infection. She's still on my Chinese herbs. Um, and then she comes to see me for acupuncture in December. She still hasn't gotten a complete thyroid panel. Um, and I wanted her vitamin D rechecked. And then I, again, urged this complete clotting factor panel. Um, she finally gets to see a hematologist at that point. And he discovers something, um, prothrombin, but doesn't um, recommend any treatment for it. Tells her the baby aspirin can't hurt, but doesn't make it seem like it's anything that big of a deal and probably has nothing to do with her miscarriages. Um, I sent her some information because I felt otherwise. Um, and then so in March 2020, she writes me. Um, so now at this point, I haven't seen her. Um, I also recommended that she read Spirit Babies and start do, getting like more emotionally connected to. So at this point, she's following this diet. She's taking my Chinese herbs. She's still getting these damn yeast infections. So then we decide um, we got to go yeast free. So on the body belief diet, but removing all yeast, um, which means like kombucha and fermented foods. Oh my God. Um, I keep getting these phone calls. I'm so sorry. I should have put turned on my do not disturb. I don't know why I didn't. Um, so she messages me in March. Um, as she's still not pregnant, um, she's working on her candida issues, her yeast issues. She has an appointment with an infectious disease specialist who deals with this issue. Um, she's also looking for a good endocrinologist and hoping to get the testing done that I want her to get done. Um, the oregano oil pills that I had her on have helped. And let's see, she's been on an extremely low sugar diet, taking the vaginal care probiotic that I'd recommended. Um, she's doing a lot better from the yeast perspective, and then she's going to get in to see me for acupuncture, but then COVID hits and she, guess what? She gets COVID. 
So April 20th, so my clinic shuts down March 17th, 2020. Um, uh, April 8th, she writes me. Um, by the regular form, she wants more herbs. Um, hope you're doing well. My husband and I both tested positive for COVID, but we're basically back to normal now. Um, I've been wanting to start your 30 day body belief diet. So she was, you know, I, I thought she was following this diet. And I think she was kind of dancing around it, not fully in the purify phase, which or, or starting the elimination diet. So I really wanted her to do a full elimination diet. So April, she early April, she's like, I'm going to do it. I'm diving in. Um, I need to restock some items. I've done a bunch of preparation. Um, and the infectious disease doctor put her on boric acid for the vaginally for the yeast infection. Um, and then um, May 31st, I checked in with her. Um, she said she had a telemedicine appointment with the infectious disease doctor. Again, boric acid supplements. Um, I'm following the purify phase of your body belief diet and I'm getting back into incorporating the mudras, the acupressure and all the mindfulness stuff from yes, you can get pregnant. We're still trying. It's easier now without the yeast. Um, and then she needed more herbs. And then so mid June, she emails me. So this was May 31st. So this cycle, she actually winds up getting pregnant. But listen to the whole story. So she emails me mid June. I'm on cycle day 34. Um, I have no period. I feel pregnant, but I'm afraid to test. I don't want to test until I'm like seven weeks pregnant. So, okay, fine. I kind of urge that she get tested anyway. No. So, um, her husband and her just want to see how the next month goes while keeping fingers crossed and continuing to pray that something really good is happening. And then if things are the same as they are now with her BBTs being so high, they will take a test. For now, I think the best thing I can do is make sure I take excellent care of my health, keep eating well, eat more protein. And that was a big thing with her. She just, when I met her, she was eating like very little protein. So it was a huge change for her. Um, and then getting off all the gluten-free packaged processed stuff. Um, and then... You know, should I still continue with the herbs? I changed up her formula to help hold the pregnancy. So she emails again, like a week later. Now she's cycle day 42. She still hasn't taken a pregnancy test. Her BBT started to dip a little bit. So she got nervous. I said, why don't you take progesterone or at least go get it tested? Um, again, I urged her to get to the doctor. She she didn't. June, uh, a couple weeks later, she, or the next week, it's in June, end of June, she finally tests and it's positive. Um, but she starts bleeding. So again, I urge her to see a doctor. She she goes to the doctor. I had my uh, July 6th, I had my first pregnancy appointment. I'm anxious because she doesn't know if it's going well. She saw the gestational sac and was expecting to see more by now. I couldn't even ask if she saw anything in there because I was so nervous. I told her I'm at seven weeks counting from day one, um, but it looks more like a week four. So again, it's just stopped growing as soon as she got pregnant basically, which just sucks. Probably, I think it was a blighted ovum this time. Um, I told her I'm taking progesterone. She said she will call me with the results. So um, on July 19th, so two weeks later, the progesterone and HCG levels came back so low. She had me come back um, again, uh, did retest, and again, everything was dropping. Um, and I had a little bit of spotting. I'm wondering what it will bring. I asked my gynecologist how to try to figure out why I keep having these recurrent miscarriages. She suggested seeing a reproductive endocrinologist for a consultation for recurrent miscarriages. What are your thoughts? I think it's a good idea. I'm also open to other suggestions. I would like to start seeing one covered by my insurance, hoping to have the appointment more or less covered. I'm willing to follow up with someone who's not covered afterward once I have all the blood work. Um, so I put her on herbs to help process the miscarriage. Um, I urged her again for a complete clotting factor panel. I said, you did not have to see a reproductive endocrinologist. You could just see a hematologist. I also gave her some names like Dr. Vidali, Dr. Jonathan Cher, um, Dr. Kofinas, like look if, and see if any of these guys are covered that you could get this blood work done. Um, and then she showed me some blood work that had been done in late 2019. Um, and that's where I saw that prothrombin thing again. And I said, can you go back to this hematologist now, get the one that tested for this prothrombin and, and ask for a complete clotting factor panel and also bring up, now this is your fourth miscarriage. And, and so finally that doctor, again, like I think he was kind of half in, half out, like, ah, the baby aspirin probably won't make a difference. I don't think you're miscarrying because of this reason. Then he finally says, I agree with your acupuncturist. I would be on the baby aspirin on a regular basis. 
Um, and then also, mind you, she's she's still doing this diet completely now. She's in the purified phase. She's eliminated. So her yeast is gone. Her gut is healing. Um, and so um, since you pointed out that mutation, I Googled it and I saw that it looks like it causes recurrent miscarriages. Um, so her husband wanted her to start seeing the reproductive and endocrinologist. So I scheduled a telemedicine consultation appointment for Wednesday morning. I'm keeping in mind what you said about how doctors at this places tend to handle people like me because of her age. Um, we're both open to seeing one of the other doctors you recommended. Um, the mutations effect sound consistent with what's happened in my last two losses. This recent one wasn't growing. I realized there are other possible reasons. The previous one, the doctor showed me the sonogram, um, not enough blood. She gave me the name of the hematologist she was seeing. Um, then October 16th, she writes me. So now this is, um, what is this? This is like two, a month and a half later, asking me about DHEA. She's now read the book. It starts with the egg. Um, and I want to say this to all of you guys about that book. The recommendation for the DHEA in that book is way too high. And I think is a reckless recommendation. It is not something that every woman should take 75 milligrams every day. That can really affect your ovary function in a bad way. I never recommend more than 10, max 25 milligrams of DHEA a day. And only after I test to make sure a client's DHEA is low. So in this case, when she writes me, I say exactly that to her. She gets it tested. It is low. We put her on 10 milligrams of DHEA a day. That's it. 10 milligrams of DHEA a day. Um, also, I saw the reproductive endocrinologist. We did a saline sonogram. He recommended scheduling minor surgery to remove a polyp. Um, he said that could be causing a miscarriage. Um, and I'm also going to, I'm also committing to taking the baby aspirin the second half of my cycle, as you and I discussed. I said, I, I said the same thing about the DHEA again, urge the castor oil packs. Um, she's on the DHEA 10 milligrams. She's still on her Chinese herb. She's still doing the body belief diet, like fully committed in the body belief diet. Um, and um, <clears throat> January 25th, 2021. So what's that? Three weeks ago. Uh, hi, Amy. I have great news. I am 15 weeks pregnant with a healthy baby girl. I was waiting for enough good results to come in before saying anything, but it's looking good so far. I want to thank you so much for all of your help in getting me to this point. I think the final change that made the biggest difference was the body relief diet and the taking the daily baby aspirin. The first month that I took it starting at ovulation was the month I got pregnant with our baby girl. My husband and I are trying to figure out. So then she has some basic questions for me. Um, and so far we got through the NT scan of the blood test. Um, and the genetics, everything looks good and um, healthy baby girl. And then we emailed uh, just today and everything is going great. So there's a good story for you. So I think a couple things that, um, that to point out is that there was a little bit of a delay, I suppose. Um, I know she trusted me and, and took me seriously and listened to my advice, but um, was really hesitant. Maybe the delay was the doctors didn't support getting the right blood work or um, she wasn't, if you will, pushy enough to get the right blood work and then to treat it. And I had been recommending the baby aspirin from the get-go. I do, however, always trust in divine timing. And I do also think the yeast and the gut stuff really needed to be fixed first before she could create the best quality eggs to make that beautiful baby girl that's flourishing in her belly. Um, so I think the two biggest changes for her were, were this diet, getting off, eating more protein and fat, getting off all of the crappy processed packaged health foods that were gluten-free, um, cutting sugar out of her diet, going yeast-free. So we, we healed the, the yeast um, and then uh, taking that baby aspirin and getting the right support from the right doctors. And so um, what gene mutation did she have? So she had she had the prothrombin and her PTT time was a little slow. Those are the clotting factors. And then she also had the MTHFR. Um, I'm not going to remember which one, but she had, she was heterozygous for MTHFR. How old is Jackie now? She's about to be 46 next month, March, um, March, she turns 46. And so, um, and how does the baby aspirin help? So if you have a clotting factor disorder, it basically thins the blood. 
uh, to allow for implantation to stick and for blood flow to get to the baby. So if you have a clotting factor disorder, basically what that means is your body forms little blood clots at the site of an injury. Um, the body sometimes can't tell the difference between a pregnancy and an injury. And so in the uterus, if you have a clotting factor disorder, the body will form blood clots around the embryo and basically starve it. And so then it dies, it can't grow. And so taking a baby aspirin can be a, a short fix for that. I do urge always all of you guys to see a hematologist to get that, that clearly diagnosed and treated. Um, you don't, you're not supposed to take a baby aspirin all month long, unless you have severe clotting factor issues. Again, a hematologist will be able to tell you that. I usually only recommend it in the luteal phase once you can be pregnant. Um, again, I do recommend that you see a reproductive immunologist, endocrinologist, and or a hematologist or your gynecologist, someone to support that decision. Um, what was another thing that I was going to say there? But in this case, so sometimes women need stronger than, than a baby aspirin. They actually need a prescribed medication like a blood thinner, like Lovenox or Plaquenil. Um, and that works too, especially if they have like more severe clotting factor issues. In this case, the baby aspirin seems to be working, which is amazing. Um, let me just see. Uh, yeah, she's 45. She'll be 46. Sorry. Did I say that? Yeah. Um, so again, I don't know your case, Cassidia. So I would say you should consult with your physician before taking the baby aspirin. Um, I had the Dutch done and very, very low DHEA. My functional doctor recommended a low dose of DHEA to help. Exactly. Uh, that's all I would ever do is a low dose, 10, max 25 milligrams. And I work with the Dutch people all the time, and that is the general recommendation. They are not supportive whatsoever of that 75 milligrams per day that is in the book. It starts with the egg. Again, I think that's a reckless recommendation. Um, and is doing more harm than good for many women. Just like the recommendation for everybody to take Vitex or Maca, I think it can be very reckless because it's not appropriate for every single case. Um, so you really should work with an expert who is actually a medical practitioner, um, who has studied medicine and some sort of medicine. You know, I study Chinese medicine, Western medicine, functional medicine, um, and can look at your case and then properly prescribe to you. And yeah, the Body Belief Jumpstart, we posted that on uh, Facebook, Instagram. If you want to check that out, that was the course that she took um, in conjunction with this. It's amyropp.com slash book gift or just DM us on Instagram. Um, okay, so egg quality. Again, Melissa, I would go here. And then I would also sign up on my website, like for my newsletter, or just keep following me here because we're about to release a book all about egg quality. So you want to be first dibs on that. Um, and yeah, I think that's it guys. Let's see. Um, but this was a great story of hope. Don't you agree? Um, and I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions on the IG. So anyway, okay guys, I'm going to go. You guys all have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoyed another story of hope and you'll see me, you know, every week I come live here. But every, once a month, I do stories of hope. So I have a handful of pregnancies right now, really exciting cases. So I usually just wait until they hit the 20-week mark or further along, and then I start sharing their stories. So can't wait to get next month. I have um, a woman who's about 10 years younger than this woman, but who had been trying for, I think, close to five years and finally healthily pregnant again with a baby girl. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll share that one next time. All right, guys, have a great day.